So let's talk about this grip and why I think it's my favorite grip so far, but also why I think it might not be legal. There's not many things in this gun industry that I would say I'm an expert on, but if there's one thing that I think I'm very well versed on and able to give true solid advice on, it would have to be featureless grips, um, which is a pretty lame thing to be a good expert on. But as someone that owns the Resurgent, the Sparrow, the featureless arms liberal grip, and the Exile Machining Hammerhead grip, as well as the new Juggernaut Tactical grip, personally, I would say that I'm pretty well versed on what is and isn't a good option and what is a definite solution to the pistol grip issue. I've tried all of these. Currently, my favorite is the Sparrow Dynamics grip. I also like the liberal grip. The resurgent just doesn't quite work for me because I have massive hands and the exile machine just isn't quite as ergonomic as the other three in addition to being impossible to get nowadays. Now in comes the juggernaut tactical which in my mind is currently the most comfortable and I first have to thank everyone that supports me on Patreon for being the reason I was able to purchase this grip. If it was not for the support that I had from them, I would not have been able to justify spending the 80 whole dollars that this grip costs just for testing and review. One user in specific who decided to remain anonymous and go by a moniker decided to donate enough for me to give him a personal shout out and I thank him for that incredibly. My man, Thickcock45. My man, Larry Thickers. My man, Larry Snickers. My man, Taryn Butler's lawyer, AKA the Dildozer. This man is an absolute mad lad for deciding to support enough support so heavily, but deciding to remain anonymous, and I respect the shit out of that. If you cannot afford or cannot justify spending money through Patreon, I would love it if you could like, comment, subscribe, because that does help this channel grow, and we get more California gun owners aware of what we can and can't do. So let's talk about this grip and why I think it's my favorite grip so far, but also why I think it might not be legal. And I'll talk about that at the end. So let's talk about what I like and don't like. What I like about this grip, the ergonomics. It's absolutely fantastic, by far the most comfortable. I'm still able to wrap my thumb over the top of it, which gives me more control over the gun, which I've talked about in my previous video comparing these other grips. I don't like fin grips. I've discussed that in length. Anytime you're doing any real dynamic shooting, you lose control over it because being unable to wrap your thumb around, this gun wants to come out, which might not be an issue at the range when you're just shooting casually, but if you're running fast, reloading, sweaty, it's hot out, this is gonna be an issue. I really like this grip because of how comfortable it is. It feels like a traditional rifle stock, which I think a lot of people are familiar with, and it's comfortable. It allows me to have my wrist in a decent angle. I'm still a little bit cramped up because of how long my arms are, but that's something I can never really avoid with a featureless style grip. This gun is much more usable. I can use the safety on the right side, which is something that most grips don't allow you to do because you can't get your thumb deep enough into it. I love this grip. However, it's $80, and we'll talk about why it's $80. This is machined aluminum. This whole thing is a solid block of aluminum, billeted out, and made for this gun. Why did they do that? I personally have one theory. Making a mold for a polymer grip or a polymer part is expensive. You're spending about 50 grand just to get up and running and have the first production model made. Uh, for a new grip on the market that might have questionable legality, um, that's probably a lot to stomach for one company. They're probably testing the market, seeing if there's interest. Because on every single post that they've made on Instagram or that I've made, everyone has brought up, why is it $80? Well, the reason it's $80 is because it's all metal. <sighs> Personally, I see that as a con. I have never seen a plastic grip break. I've never seen an A2 style grip break on anyone. So why did they choose metal? I think they just didn't want to invest the money in a cast or in a mold for a polymer machine. And that's an issue for me. However, it's pretty solid. I don't like that it's metal because it's heavy also. This gun, all in all, is not a lightweight gun. I've got a cloud defensive Overwatch, cloud defensive optimized weapon light on it, a full 15 inch rail, a thick barrel, an Aimpoint Pro, a very sturdy stock. Nothing about this gun is lightweight. So for me to add another point of extra weight that doesn't need to be there at all, uh, I see that as a con. But it's still the most comfortable grip that I've tried, so that does outweigh those two cons for me. Most people wouldn't justify being able to spend more than 35 bucks, which is what you can get one of these Sparrow grips or any of the other grips that I've shown. The Juggernaut being 80 bucks, the Juggernaut being heavy, the Juggernaut being metal, 
is a con for a lot of people, but some people might enjoy that. So if that's something you enjoy, great. So now that we've talked about why I like the grip and why I don't like the grip, I gotta talk about why I can't in good conscience actually recommend you buy this. I don't know if this is legal. And I've reached out to Juggernaut and they left me on red, but then they eventually got back to me saying, when I asked, can you get your lawyer or your legal team to write up some sort of strong document saying exactly why you feel this grip is legal? Because currently, you look at all the other grips on the market, like this, you look at the grip like this featureless arms liberal grip. You can't wrap your thumb around it at all below the exposed portion of the trigger because the definition of a, <laughs> because the definition of a pistol grip is a grip that allows a pistol style grasp that protrudes conspicuously beneath the action of the gun. Now, the way that's been defined is being able to wrap your thumb over the top of the grip above the exposed portion of the trigger is legal. If you can wrap your thumb over the top of the grip below the exposed portion of the trigger, that's not legal. And the graphic that I'm showing up here should elaborate that a little bit better. On this gun, when I grab it, there is no doubt in your mind that my thumb stays above that trigger. Now, you might have noticed, I have freakishly large fingers and skinny hands. This allows me to do something that I think might cause some concern for people. For starters, for legal reasons, this gun is fixed magazine, meaning that I cannot remove a magazine from it while it is not broken apart. This gun right here, I can grab the trigger from this position here, which I will show some photos of that I've taken earlier. My thumb, depending on what you consider the web of your thumb, could be considered below that exposed portion of the trigger. However, I think that Juggernaut is probably going the route of saying that it's not a pistol style grasp to begin with. And then a lot of people are saying, well, what about the Thordsons? The Thordsons have a similar grip angle. And that is correct. However, the Thordsons are a stock. And Alan Thordson actually said himself that if they could have sold a grip like this without the stock on it, they would have a long time ago. However, they don't because they said it's absolutely not legal. And I have spoken with some other companies who make grips and they've all kind of said the same thing about why they made their grips the way they do and why they didn't go a route like this. So for me, until Juggernaut actually gets back and says that their lawyers have a solid legal definition of why they think this grip is featureless, I couldn't recommend it to you. If they do end up updating that and sending me something that we can then print out and shove in our grips to explain to any law enforcement, I'll let you know, I'll put it in a pinned comment. But currently, if I owned this on a semi-auto centerfire with detachable magazines, I would probably transport it unassembled as if this gun wasn't legally assembled. I would transport this as if I was trying to transport an assault weapon through the state where they're disconnected. So for me, would I recommend it? Currently, I can't answer that question. However, I've given you enough information and Juggernaut is insistent on this gun being legal. It's also being sold in a big box store by Turner's. They're not a small company. And if they're comfortable with putting that on their own guns and selling it in their stores like that, that's gotta mean something, right? So all in all, if we look at this, it's a damn good grip. It functions excellently, it feels good. It feels the best out of any grip that I've ever tried, including the Thorts and Stocks. But we don't know if it's legal, it's expensive, it's heavy. So we kind of look at the pros and cons and you can make your own decisions. I think this could be a great option, but I really want to hear back from Juggernaut and what they have to say as far as why they feel it's legal, because I've heard a lot of people say that they don't think it's legal, and I'm almost led to believe that. So a lot of information to take in. Again, I really need to thank everyone that supports me through Patreon and then everyone that supports through liking, commenting, and sharing these videos. The more people share them externally, the better, because YouTube will not promote this outside of the people that already watch my videos. So if you wanna support the channel, the easiest way to do so is just copying the link, sharing it on Facebook, sending it to your friends, letting people know about this. Thank you, everyone that supports the channel. We've really grown so much. We're at nearly 8,000 subscribers today, and last year, this time, I think we were at 1,200. So it's insane. I, I really can't thank you all enough. I really appreciate the community that we've developed here. I think that there's not many YouTube channels out there that actually have a solid community the way that we do. I see people interacting with each other. The same people that comment on my videos will then respond to the same people and have little conversations. 
that's honestly super cool. And I think that that's a big thing when it comes to reaching out and making connections with fellow gun owners. I'm, I'm really just very thankful for what I'm able to do. And I, I appreciate the fuck out of you guys. And 1% of you that are girls, I guess. Um, if you have any questions, drop a comment below. If you like this or if you don't like it, let me know below. If you have one of these grips and you're not able to grab it in a weird way like I am, let me know. If you are, let me know. As always, have fun, be safe. Peace.